Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, February 15th, 2012. I hope you had a romantic Valentine's Day because it's time to battle. My name is Day9. And I'm Rob Simpson. And it is time for the After Hours Gaming League Week 5, the final round of league play. As we go take a look at the division standings, we see that five teams are undefeated. Epic, IBM, EA, Facebook, and Intel. The teams that are in red are the teams that right now are in the top three positions and can advance to the playoffs. So what it means is that all those teams in white are really going to have to battle hard in these games this week to get into that top three position. The game we're going to be bringing you today is Facebook versus Google. Who will be able to get that number one spot in division number four? Don't go anywhere because we're going to get you the answer literally now. Man, so, are you ready see? for the social media meltdown? That is right. Google versus Facebook in the top right corner. From Team Facebook, it is Stark. And in the ghostly pink up in the top left, we got Steve-O from Team Google. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be playing as the, I guess, pinkish? Pinkish slash purple lavender zerg? I think it is a lavender color. Uh, it certainly is a very calm pastel. I would be more than happy to decorate a room for a child with that very color. Or Easter. This is the color that you paint Easter eggs. This is. This is the Easter egg Zerg. And the real question is, wouldn't it be a fun Easter egg for Stark to find that six pool in his opponent's base? Who? It, it would have been. But fortunately, he's not going to be doing anything mm. that crazy. That would have been absolutely man risking the first match in your for your team when you're they're currently undefeated right Facebook is undefeated that's right Facebook so, is undefeated ooh, right now risking a loss on a six pool opening against the T yeah it generally <laughs> waits till game three to do that risk <laughs> zing all right cool we do see that there is a barracks going down at the front of the base just getting ready to do that wall off in terms of openings in general we will see the Terran player open up with that double hellion control and our Zerg buddy going for the early expand. Oh, and of course, just as actually, that drone may be going out to scout. Yeah, I do believe so. So there is, we're actually going to see a little drone on SCV high five there, passing each other in the center, and there goes the oh, drone no. to make that hatch. Oh, oh well, he block it. Oh, and he blocks it. Oh. How painful. It does look like Steve. Oh, he's going to try to build an engineering bay. Oh, my God, it looked like the SCV was actually just building in the air, but he does manage to land that eBay. So right now, things are looking very stark for Steve-O, who's playing against Stark. <laughs> They pretty much just set up the jokes just for us. Oh, man, it looks like, is this drone potentially going to go for something crazy? No, he's just not finding information down there. Ugh. No, Stark is valiantly trying to finish off that engineering barrier at least as much as he can. Oh, well, oh, oh, oh first blood. Uh, that is a painful way to both get the advantage and then lose it promptly. Planting that engineering bay down, but when you lose a scouting SCV, at the very at the very least, your cheeks become thoroughly reddened. Stark, it looks like, is not going to be going for any sort of fast Hellion build. He will just be going for a one barracks early expand. But the Overlord! The Overlord! Oh, Rob! Oh, man. oh the humanity! Oh! Oh, that Overlord is not going to be able to get away from that Marine. He will try. Try as he might. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's not, not looking like it. No, maybe. Maybe he'll be able to go a little bit faster. No. He's going to try. He's going to try to get away. He's going to try to hide on the disco floor that is at the front of Tall Dream Altar. But as it turns out, there are two there ready to oh, tango no. with guns aimed at his head. And he explodes into a geeky pile of gack. At least he can go down and say, well, you, you had to use two Marines to kill me. Yeah, yeah it took you long enough. <laughs> Looks like Steve-O yeah. has tried to expand, but he's going to get Manor Zerglinged there. He does manage to start his Zergling speed first. Uh, it looks like he went for a usual gas pool type Overlord. There's not really going to be too much for um, Steve-O to be concerned about. I think this is a pretty reasonable build to do anyways. All the time. I saw it a lot last week. That mm -hmm. particularly, Violet always likes to open up with uh, pool first. Always. Yeah. Always. I mean, pool first, gas pool is getting this increasing surge of popularity in the Zerg vs. Terran match. Mm -hmm. It was always very common in Zerg vs. Protoss, but players are more and more steering clear of all those early hatch builds because the Zergs are more realizing that they can put a ton of pressure back on their Terran buddy with this sort of early pressure. But it looks like Steve-O is going to be running up against a little bit of a wall in. 
Uh-oh. So here comes a bunch of those Zerglings, but they probably won't be able to get through that wall. You got four Marines already back there, and so he's really just going to get out there, get a little bit of information, possibly force his opponent into making additional units, although he's not even able to get back there to see that factory, I think. Oh, man. And Whoa! So surprisingly, pulling a lot of SCVs. Looks like there's no Baneling uh, bust coming in at all, but, I mean, you always have to keep in mind when you're playing in a tournament situation, your brain can always play tricks on you. You can see a ton of Zerglings at the front of your base, and you want to go, Oh, God, I hope I don't lose right now, especially with your entire team watching. And it looks like we will see Steve-O take it out with ease. But look at this, Rob. A Roach Warren. Oh. Now, he could be going for a really strong two-blaze play. We've just mm -hmm. we've seen just how crazy it can be when uh, when a Zerg player has two queens out there. They're pumping lots of larvae. You can hit really nice timings when you hit your saturation. Yeah, I mean, especially these Zergs who are now finding just the right time to mm -hmm. stop that drone production. The Roachhorn finishes, boom, a couple swing across. And look at this, nice timing on that evolution chamber. Right now, the Zerg has no idea what's going on in this base. It could be Fast Banshee, and uh, Fast Banshee will arrive at the base around 7 minutes and 30 seconds with Cloak done. So that's actually a perfectly timed Evo chamber, but Steve-O would love to get a little bit more data on what's going on in that main base. Oh, and it's not looking like he's going to be able to. Now, over here, we do have the first tank just about to pop out. He's also started siege mode as well, and he has just finished his second orbital command. The question is going to be, when is he going to be able to safely get that orbital command out there with yeah, all of those, yeah. with that roach worm getting set up? It's going to be, could be a while. I mean, right now, Steve-O, I think, is more than anything confused. I mean, he is getting mm -hmm. these spore crawlers up. He just doesn't oh, man. really know. Again, timing on this. very nice timing if his opponent is going Banshee. But what Stark is instead doing is this very fast factory hmm. with siege mode. This is another way of saying, I don't want to push quickly, but when I do push, I want to have it be way stronger than normal. He's going for a powerful mid-game push that will be bolstered by having five to six tanks instead of two to three. Now, alternatively, I don't think that Stark has very much information on Steve-O either, so maybe he's also in the... Yeah, he literally has zero information <laughs> as far... He literally just sees a hook on he, the minimap. He actually really has no concrete evidence that he's even in that corner. Yeah. He hasn't seen any creep. He may very well have just loaded up a game on the single player and is playing on an empty map, but he's going to find out soon enough with this medevac drop what he's going to be up against. We do see that fast layer by Steve-O. He is getting that carapace oh. upgrade. The player's been steering away from the plus one melee and going more for the carapace. Mm. Obviously, your links can't kill things quickly enough, but more tend to stay alive after the battle. Now, unfortunately enough for Steve-O, right at this point, he doesn't have any units out on the field, and he just made an entire round of drones. Now, mm -hmm. he is able to see that drop coming in, but will he be able to respond? Uh-oh, it looks like there are three roaches on the field. I mean, Steve was preparing for Hellions, preparing for... Oh, no! Oh, oh. no! Stark is gonna... Uh, only 14 days for minute. Oh, he just barely gets away. Getting out of there in time. He got a little too greedy. He wanted to go right to the oh, backside man. and try to drop there, but instead ran into this very oddly placed spore crawler. You know, <laughs> it's not so much that Steve O did a bad job by placing it there, it's just that Steve O didn't know. He thought he was going to be up against a banshee. That's a perfectly fine place to put it as a banshee. But, as it turns out, it's also a perfectly fine place to Whoa. put it if you're up against a drop. Uh-oh. And M's actually unloading his medevacs perfectly in view. Now, oh, will the Queen's oh, be able to get over there? They can reach no. pretty far, but will they be able to finish it off? Oh, oh he gets it! That is going to be a pretty significant blow for the Facebook Terran in that nice, beautiful Facebook blue. But it looks like the Queens are off the creep. He loses two Queens. Oh. Yuck! Roaches are going to stream into action and start doing a ton of damage, and they're going to... Oh, oh, oh wow. the Facebook Terran takes down all oh, three of the Google Zerg's Queens. Ouch. How, how is Google going to be spreading G+, without any larva? Ugh, a little bit painful. Looks like Stark is planting down three siege tanks at the front of his base. Again, his siege tank count is going to be very, very high, despite the fact that he did lose those Marines. And look at this, Rob. Oh, Ooh. sneaky third. A sneaky third expansion? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Now the question is, how long is it going to take him to saturate that? Because I think that he just barely was able to populate even his natural. And now we can also see that he's even going for his natural third as well as he takes down those destructible rocks. Yeah, I actually would love the idea if he just took both these hatches and was like, rally here. Go <laughs> cross map drones. Seriously, get to work, guys. He would be such an evil... <laughs> evil drone magnate. I don't know what they're called, but he certainly would get broken up by the Antitrust Foundation. Overmind? Mm-hmm. Cerebrate? I don't know. I don't know. What, do you, what do you call a Zerg commander, man? 
Uh, you know, who is a commander of the Zerg? We leave it up to the live chat to determine. <laughs> Looks like Stark's going for another drop. Hopefully it'll keep mm. the medevac alive this time. Oh! oh man. Wow. Those mutilists are about to get some free food on a full medevac filled with marines. Oh, now will he no. knows it? Yes, Oh, nice reaction timing there by the Facebook oh. Terror. The Google Zerg, though, is getting to pick off these marines one at a time. Ouch. Wow. Distracted, unfortunately, by the dropping marines. Did not go to finish off the medevac. And instead, he's forced to, to turn around with his mutilist to gather up some additional lings. Uh-oh. Very nice snipe there, targeting down all those marines. Does pull back, though. The siege uh -oh. tank blast scare him a little bit. And, of course, we're seeing Stark get more and more and more of those basic ground units. And that plus one upgrade, a third command center. Wowzas. Hmm. So, where is he going to expand to is the question. We haven't seen him go for his own destructible rocks. It could be possible that he lifts off and goes to that base right below. We'll see soon. I'm pretty sure he'll end up going for that base. This isn't going to be that terrible of a decision. Well, he is morphing it to an orbital command, hmm. so he may just leave it in his main base. We do see it's rallied back. Nothing wrong with going three command center play on this map, but taking that right position would be fairly risky, and it would help him match what Steve-O's plan is, which is also to hide a which base is to the side. Hang out with drones on your queen. Oh, man. Oh, just kidding. That was not the drop. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that mutilisks were dropping... <laughs> Well, you know, some, and roaches. sometimes it's very easy to get yourself a little bit over-scared. I mean, especially if you're playing, like, in Zerg Reserve and you see a whole bunch of roaches stream by, and you're like, oh, he's attacking! And you're like, oh, thank God, those are my roaches. Looks like the uh, Marines that were sent forward to just try to secure that watchtower do end up falling. But God, look at that ridiculous tank count. Whoopsie days, a little bit of misclick accidentally loading up everything together, but the tank count is just so high. This is going to make it very difficult for those Zerglings to be able to get in there, and it's basically going to be mutas against Marines. Oh, man, and that that is not a terribly fair matchup. You generally don't want to try fighting mutilists, or Marines with your mutilists. It's, it's t oh. ends up being relatively necessary. Now, Steve-O, unfortunately, hasn't been able to populate yeah, that we, hidden third quite yet. Looks like he went for the hidden third, loved the timing of taking that hidden third base, but he's getting a little bit distracted by this huge force. Always very <laughs> difficult to try to just keep macroing, keep saturating these other bases, because it's almost like a distraction yes. at this point. And this is actually beautiful timing by Stark, waited for this entire army to move out to the center of the map, and then is taking it. Good timing, but if this attack doesn't work, that's going to be a vulnerable base. Oh, man. And so expanding behind that aggression is a great move. And now the question is, will he be able to move out? The longer that he waits, the more prepared that his opponent is going to be able to be. This Facebook uh -oh. push just may not be able to break through these Google defenses. It looks like the Googles are trying to mass up a bunch of Banelings. Does he have Baneling speed? Oh, no! Oh, they're no. going to be slow, dumb Banelings. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be terrible. That's like the moment that you pass the baton off to the guy that does nothing but drink Coke and burritos. Oh, man. Drinks burritos. He drinks Coke. He drinks burritos. That's not healthy for a running diet. It looks like the Banelings are streaming in. The tank count is too damn high. And it looks like all the tanks obliterate that small force of Banelings, Roaches, and Zerglings. The Mutalists are all that's left. But, the, man, the Facebook tear in a fantastic position. Wow, so that was actually great time for him. Now he is going to be able to bring in these mutilists to oh, clean up the rest the of that push. Mules. Oh, now were those mana mules is the question. Well, it looks like he thought he was in a little bit better of a position than he thought he was. Because the manor mules are now sitting up there taking some heavy fire from the mutilists that are now cleaning everything out. Where'd the marines go? Oh my gosh, he's killed off wow. all the marines at the front. And suddenly, instead of having six tanks for offense, wow. he has six tanks that are free kills for Stevo. Oh man. So unfortunately, uh, Stark was not able to... He just didn't bring additional reinforcements in there, right? That whole time, he was not bringing any any additional backup. He got his opponent into a rough spot, forced him to make a lot of units, really killed his army very efficiently, and man, those mules are chilling. Just kind of hanging out, waiting for their lifespan. So, oh my god! Could they have died a peaceful oh, death? The horror. They had to be broken up into bits and have some fall off a cliff. In the meantime, oh. uh oh a small crack in Stark's wall is going to be repaired quickly. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Does look like, oh, look at this. Greater Spire. Oh. Hey. Yo, that means that we are definitely going to be seeing Broodlords. Broodlords could be just the power that the Facebook player, or excuse me, the Google player needs to push through those Terran Facebook defenses.
does look like the uh, Google Zerg Stevo just continuing to mass up on drones. Hasn't retaken this geyser at his natural expansion, but he does have the south expansion starting to look a little bit more legit, but again, getting a touch distracted by these large engagements in the center of the map. In the meantime, Stark is in a comfortable position with this third expansion that actually has so many yeah. turrets. So, so many turrets. Very safe. Is very safe from air, but a pair right. of zerglings would show up, and not, not not only can they show up, but they could freely walk in between that wall. Mm -hmm. Although I think he's banking on them not going there. Now he did just get a ling over there and found out that information. We see a small attack force starting to swing around the map. Oh man, how is Stark going to defend this? Uh oh, it looks like Stark is getting a fourth command center still, starting to accumulate those tanks, does have a good amount of all the unit producing structures, is getting those 2-2 two -two upgrades, but the Greater Spire is getting very close to done. There it is! Seven Corruptors are also en route, the plus two Carapace upgrade. He is going to have himself a huge Ling Broodlord army very soon. Mm hmm and now he also has his... his army in a really good place to stop his opponent from reinforcing. He's actually in an awesome position to get through and push. Of course, Stark did not create a planetary fortress, so it's going to be very uh -oh, vulnerable uh -oh. to push. Oh, this is going to be really dangerous. Stark's moving out, but his forces are split. He Whoa. has to keep them split until he can get control of this center watchtower. But it looks like a Mutilus is going to be flying on in. The Zerglings trying to stream in. Oh, Whoa. my God. He just wanted to do some aggressive reconnaissance. Now wait, okay, so now he's starting to bring back the unit, possibly to get us around and just finish off Stark's army. Now if he's able to get in there and kill that army, that will clearly put Stevo in a, in a good enough position. And yeah, there he goes with all the units, and of course, Stevo, meanwhile, is expanding to a fifth base. And it looks like there's the scan, but his tanks are not sieged up in time, the Banelings are rolling on, and oh, Stevo, oh. the Google Zerg wrecking the Facebook Terrans Force, where do you oh. go? And that was not the right answer. He snapped the tendon on his foot. Didn't even hit the ground because he landed on a Baneling. <laughs> Banelings tend not to break Terran's fall very well. But oh man, Stark's getting down there into the fourth base, getting off a very nice stiff, a little side attack. Now he is going to be able to deal massive damage here, but the question is, will he be able to hold on? There's a very large force coming out of the Google player right now, and I just don't know if it's going to be enough for him to pull through this. Of course, he's going to get down there and clean that up, and now the Broodlords are here. In the meantime, it looks like Stark, so responsible with these giant depot wall offs, has saved himself a number of times from attacks at the front, attacks at the third, and now with the fourth base coming up, Stark is in a good position to start massing up a huge army, but will it be too late? The Broodlords are already en route. But, oh, and with no answer to Broodlords, this could very well be the nail in the coffin for the Facebook Terran. And the, oh, and of course, there they go, laying down from Siege Range, and oh man, we're actually going to see a little bit of splash landing onto those Broodlings. Oh no, it's not looking like those Marines are going to have exactly the answer that they need. As a matter of fact, the tanks are even attacking the Marines because of where those Broodlings are going, and it's looking really rough for Stark. I'm not going to lie, Rob, this is a painful position to be in for Stark. Steve-O now taking out all the turrets, yuck does look like a little bit of repulsion going on, but the Broodlords continue to just unleash these volleys of actual living creatures onto the enemy, and oh, is he going to go for the big bus now? And here it comes! Oh, Can yeah. the Facebook Terran withstand? It's not looking too good for him now. All those tanks against oh, and oh, and it taps it out. And it looks like that means that Facebook will be able to start the series off up 1-0. to zero. Oh, no, excuse me. They just lost. Mm -hmm. My bad, you guys. It looks like Google will be able to start that series off 1-0. to zero. And that means that Google is getting ever closer to that number one spot in Division 4. Can they do it closing the series out? in the next two games. Let's find out as we go on to AHGL Week 5, game number two between Facebook and Google.